Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Pen Habit. My name is Matt Armstrong, and I am glad to have you here for yet another pen review. Before we start today's review, please allow me to say a quick thank you to Kenro Industries. Kenro Industries is the U.S. distributor for Aurora, Montegrappa, and the um, recently shuttered, and rest in peace, Omas. Uh, fountain pen companies, as well as other luxury items like timepieces, that sort of thing. So uh, I met them at the LA show, and they offered to send me a pen for review, and it arrived a few weeks ago, so I've been having a very good time playing around with it. So the pen for today's review is the Montegrappa Copper Mule. It is a mostly copper pen that is based on the Fortuna line that, uh, that Montegrappa has put out, and I've reviewed the Fortuna before. I did the white and ruthenium version that I said looked a lot like Eva from WALL-E or looked like it belonged in uh, Apple, the Apple designer's uh, stable of products, John, Johnny Ivy. So this is the copper version of that same pen, and it's beautiful. It comes in this blue box uh, with the kind of octagonal tile design and the Montegrappa Italia logo on the top. Top of the box comes off and the flap folds down uh, to reveal this really quite lovely pen coffin or pen box. I feel like Montegrappa does a really nice job with their pen boxes. Uh, they feel nice high quality uh, boxes. So it's got the little medallion here on the top and that same octagonal tile uh, motif. Um, really nice, nice feeling box. I uh, open it up, and inside is the pen itself, along with uh, the little silica gel packet. Please do not eat this, in case you were ever tempted. And uh, a couple of Montegrappa ink cartridges and the booklet. So let's talk about this pen, shall we? So this pen, I'm just going to pull it out of its little plastic bag, is made mainly from copper. So both the, the cap and the barrel are made from copper, and then he's got these brushed stainless steel accents uh, all the way around. So uh, the design overview starts with this 1912 medallion up at the top, which is the year of Montegrappa's founding. So they've been around for quite a while. The cap's got a kind of bulbous shape to it, which I think actually fits very nicely with the overall design, the overall profile of the pen. This clip is very, very sturdy. So very strong clip with the little roller wheel. I do like the clean lines of the clip there. So, uh, and it attaches internally to the cap through a slit in the wall of the cap. Got the wide cap band with Montegrappa in black enameled letters. And then the barrel of the pen tapers down slightly to a rounded flat end right here. Now, copper is an interesting material. When the pen first comes to you, it's going to be this just beautiful, glossy, bright, shiny copper. It will have been beautifully polished and really, really attractive. Copper, though, is a reactive metal, and it does oxidize, and it patinas over time. So you can see here, this is what it looks like after a couple of days of handling. Um, and it continues to get darker over time. Now, um, you can polish this, and it does come with, uh, where did I put it? It comes with a, a polishing cloth that um, you can use to polish it. I, to be honest, I didn't have a lot of luck with the polishing cloth, this polishing cloth, but in talking with some other people, if you put a little bit of white vinegar on a rag and rub it, the tarnish comes right off. So a little bit of white vinegar, and this, uh, this is, gets restored pretty quickly. Now, it is a very shiny metal surface, so it does pick up fingerprints. My advice to anyone considering this pen is if you're the kind of person who needs your pen to be pristine and shiny, either wear white fabric gloves when you write with this pen or don't get it. Um, this is a pen for someone who loves the motion and the feel and the look of patinaed copper because keeping this pen polished when you're writing with it on a day-to-day -day basis is kind of unrealistic in my opinion. Good thing is, I really like the way it looks when it's patinaed. It gives it, you know, that bright, shiny finish is real, and you can see it kind of looks like this little bit right here, um, is, is really quite attractive, but I think the, the motion and the depth of color uh, of, of patinaed copper is, is quite beautiful too. And it so happens that as a former red hair, redhead, um, back when I still had a full head of curly red hair, um, 
was very much the color of patinaed copper. So in that particular respect, I like this material a lot. I just want to call out the, the polishing requirements if you need your pen to be bright and shiny all the time. Might be a little onerous for you. Underneath the cap, which it comes off in, let's one and just shy of one and a half turns. And it, it turns on these big block threads here. Now you'll notice there's some dark material in the block threads, in the, the grooves of these big block threads. And I believe that is there to help with the smoothness. I, th I think that's almost like a Teflon type coating. And you'll notice on the inside of the cap, they've got this big uh, white inside inner liner. And so you're, it's, the threads are metal on plastic as opposed to metal on metal, which I think is really quite a wise design decision. You take care of the inner cap and get rid of that squeaky metal thread thing, which kind of drives me crazy. Uh, the, the section is nice sized brush metal section, very, very slightly convex um, with a, a minor taper. I love this material. I'm not a big fan of metal sections normally, but I really like this brushed steel. It gives the pen, if, if you're going to have a metal section, it's got to have some texture to it. Otherwise, it gets really slippery in the hand, and that's not something I enjoy writing with. I didn't notice slipperiness in the hand with this at all. Um, uncapped, the pen has very minimalistic, clean lines, which I like because it combines this, the, the motion of, you know, this, this reactive metal with kind of the, the clean cleanliness of line. And I think it's a good combination. It is a cartridge converter pen, um, comes with a screw in converter, but it will also accept tall and short cartridges, long and short cartridges. And again, the tenon here appears to be treated with that same material to kind of lubricate the threads a little bit. Um, really quite a nice pen, beautiful looking pen. No, I've never seen another pen quite like it. So it's, it's a unique design. Uh, well, it's not a unique design, but it's a unique combination of materials. And it's really quite comfortable to write with. I was expecting metal pen, metal threads. I was expecting I wasn't going to like this and I like it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, so in the hand, very comfortable. Uh, the, the section is long enough that even with my kind of extended grip, I don't ever find myself gripping on the threads, which is good because gripping on metal block threads is pretty uncomfortable. I've had that experience with other pens. Nice long section, very nice weight in the hand, and it feels like the steel kind of brings the weight down toward the tip of the nib. Can be posted, and it posts pretty deeply, so it fits, even posted, fits very nicely in the hand, and for my hand at least, the weight of the cap, which we'll get to when we do the measurements, sits very, very comfortably in the web of the hand, nice balance. It, it's a really comfortable pen to write with. I was able to do several pages of writing with this with no issues in terms of cramping or overgripping or any of that kind of thing. So I feel like this is a, a very nicely balanced pen. Um, so let's go through some comparisons and some measurements. So comparables. Here's the Montegrappa Copper Mule, and then we can look at the Mont Blanc 149, the Pelican M1000, and the Pelican M800. So you can see size-wise, it's, it's pretty on par with the M800. Uh, it's not the biggest pen in the world, but it's not dainty either. It's, it's got some heft to it. And then if we look at some less expensive pens for comparison's sake, here is the Twisby Eco. Again, about the same size there. We've got the Lamy All-Star. And then some smaller pens, the Platinum 3776, the Pilot Metropolitan, and just because I happen to have it here in the room, an Esterbrook J. So, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of blue and silver in this group here as well. So... Um, it's, yeah, it, it's a good size pen, but it's not ridiculously oversized either. So if you like that kind of middle size pen, this will be a, a good one for you. Measurements, you're looking at 137.3 millimeters when it's capped, uncapped, a very reasonable 127.2 millimeters, 
And as I mentioned, it, you can see how deeply it posts here. Um, you're looking at 154.8 millimeters, which is pretty short for a posted pen, as long as it's not a pocket pen. The section is about 11.2 millimeters in diameter. The widest point of the barrel is 13.5 millimeters, and the widest point of the cap, which is basically all of this right here, uh, is 100 and or is 15.7 millimeters. And as you would expect, being a metal pen, it is not the lightest pen in the world, but it's not maybe not as heavy as you might think. Uncapped, it is 33, 33 grams, I almost said millimeters, 33 grams, which is a, a nice size if you want to feel a little heft, but not too heavy. The cap itself is actually pretty heavy on its own. There's a lot of metal in this cap. And the cap is an extra 21 grams. So together you get 54 if you decide to post it. So it can get a little heavy when it's posted. But as I said, the balance still feels pretty good for my hand when it is posted. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing. The nib is interesting. Um, and I want to I want to talk you through it because it's it's n maybe not what you'd expect from an Italian pen, but it's still a great nib. So I want to talk you through it um, and do a little bit of writing. So here we go. All right, this is the Monte Grappa Copper Mule. The nib is a medium steel nib and the ink is Pilots Hiro Shizuku Kujaku and y'all I'm getting so close to the end of that bottle I maybe have two or three more fills left I'm so excited I'll finally finish a bottle of ink it's only been three years of course, in that three years, I've bought 162 other bottles of ink, so I'm not sure that's a huge accomplishment, but still, I'll finish a bottle of ink. <laughs> and we are on a Rhodia dot pad, as we always are. So here is your quote. All right, so, okay, so let's talk a little bit about this nib. Um, it is a steel nib. It is a brushed steel nib, um, which is, is very different than the kind of the very brightly polished steel nib. It's got that same uh, octagonal tile design with the Monte Grappa text. Aside from that, it looks to be a pretty standard number six size nib. Now, one of the things that I find interesting about Monte Grappa nibs, and I've seen this now on three different pens, uh, is that their nibs tend to run on the smaller side of the gauge designation and uh, have more feedback. So it, much in the same way that Aurora pens might have more feedback, Monte Grappa tends to, to have their nibs ground finer than the designation would indicate and with less of a polish, so you can feel the nib on the paper. If I were to put a feedback, the feedback scale value on this, I'd say it's probably around a five or a six. So this is not a nib where out of the box, it would just glide right off the edge of the page because it is so slippery, but that sort of thing, um, if, if you like that, it would be pretty easy to get to it. Now I will say that the nib is quite nicely um, adjusted. So, and if you're new to the, to the, my videos, I say this a lot. I say the nib is perfectly adjusted. So let me kind of explain what I mean. The, the balance between the ink flow in the pen, the feed, the converter, and how the ink flows to the paper, uh, that's what I talk about when I talk about adjustment. That and the alignment of the tines. So if the tines are out of alignment, 
it's not a well-adjusted nib. If the nib slit is, you know, like this instead of like this, it's not a well-adjusted nib. If it's tight together, it's not a well-adjusted nib. This nib is very nicely adjusted. It is adjusted to be a bit on the dry side. Um, and it was drier because I always do this. The first time I ink up a pen, I just put ink in it right away. I don't clean it out. I just want to see what it does the first time. And it was a little too dry for me. So um, in talking with a couple of other people, what they said is, and this is, this is pretty common, flush the pen with a little bit of soap, a dish soap in water, and do the same thing for the inside of the converter. I did that, and the ink flow increased probably 30, 40 percent. Uh, so it was a, a lot less dry. I think there was still probably a little bit of, of residual oil in there from the manufacturing process that, that got in the way of the ink flow. Um, when I re-inked it up, it, the flow was quite a, bit, quite a bit better, but it is still a little on the dry side. So it's not terrible. Actually, it, it's not as dry as I thought it was. It appears to be a little bit wetter than I thought it was. So um, it, it appears to be a lot better. Now, you can probably also tell that the nib is a bit on the stubbish side, meaning that the downstrokes are a bit wider than the cross strokes. It's minor because this is a fairly fine nib, but th that probably accounts for where some of the th feedback on the nib comes from. It's The nib isn't perfectly rounded. It's a little bit stubbish. Um, it's not an unpleasant feeling at all. It's actually quite a nice nib, and it writes very, very nicely uh, for me. But it is, you know, as I mentioned, a little bit on the stubbish side. Rigid steel nib, not a whole lot of line variation here. So don't expect you're going to get a lot of line variation out of it. Um, and just for comparison's sake, I'm going to grab a couple of other European pens because, so here is the, the Fortuna, or the, excuse me, the Copper Mule, which is based on the Fortuna line. Here's the Pelican Stola. This is also a medium nib, and you'll notice it's wider. And then here is a Stipula, which is another medium nib, and this one is by the same manufacturer, I would be willing to bet. You can see the feeds on these are basically identical. Um, this is a, a, a stipula medium nib, and um, it, I haven't used the pen in a few days, but you'll notice it's wetter and it's wider even still. So I don't know whether Montegrappa adjusts its nibs to be a little bit um, drier and finer, or whether they order them that way from the factory. I believe Bach makes their nibs. Um, I'd, I'd have to check that. I don't remember that for sure. Uh, just know that when you order a medium from Montegrappa, you're going to get a nib that is a little bit smaller than you might expect from other European nibs. It's going to, it's going to be a lot closer to almost a Japanese style nib than a European um, in terms of line width. Uh, and, and the only reason I feel comfortable saying that is now, as I mentioned earlier, this is the third Montegrappa I've, I've used and all of the nibs have been exactly the same. Uh, a little bit feedback prone, a little bit on the dry side, and a little bit narrower than you might expect for a nib, uh, a European nib for a medium. So I think that's the way they design them on purpose. So overall, oh, but almost forgot. I must always forget to do this. Here is your reverse writing. It's pretty dry. Um, it's a little bit scratchier, um, especially on this cross stroke from left to right. Right to left is not too bad. Um, so if you're a reverse writer, you could probably smooth that out pretty easily. Um, I like this pen a whole bunch. It is an expensive pen. Um, I've, I've thought a little bit about the best way to talk through the, the, the value proposition on this pen because it's a little tricky. Uh, now, if you've watched my videos, you know I don't have a problem spending a lot of money on a pen. Um, I, I've spent a lot of money on pens before. But generally speaking, they're pens that had something special about them. They were made out of a really unique material or a really unique design or they're, they're ra very rare, um, that sort of thing. The, the Montegrappa Copper Mule lists for $375. Certainly not one of the most expensive pens I've ever reviewed, um, but it is very much in that higher end pen range. 
it retails for quite a bit less than that. So it retails uh, for right around $300. Most authorized Montegrappa retailers, at least here in the United States, can't advertise the, the sale price, but it is my understanding this, uh, this retails for about $300. So this puts this pen very much in the same price range as, for instance, a brand new um, Visconti Van Gogh or a Salvador Dali, or even their new Millennium Arc. Um, generally speaking, it is a little unusual to find a $300 pen with a steel nib in it. Usually when you get to a certain price point, and in the U.S., that price point generally seems to be around $150 for mass-produced pens. Uh, you, you do start to see gold nibs getting in, integrated into a pen. Uh, here in the U.S., pretty much the only time you see these higher end pens, price wise, 300, 280 to $300 with steel nibs, is either from luxury brands like Montegrappa or Visconti, or from custom pen makers, where you're having a one off pen made. And if you want a, and, and so a lot of times, depending on the materials and the design, the body of the pen itself will be $300, and then the steel nib is free and it's extra if you want to add a gold nib. I'll be real honest, I love the copper on this pen. I just love it so much that $300, I would still probably be willing to pay for $300, pay $300 for this pen with a steel nib. It's kind of right on the edge of what I'd be willing to pay, but I would still be willing to pay it because it's the body of the pen that I'm buying, not the nib. Now, with this being a, a pretty standard number six size nib, I would love for this to come with a gold nib, um, be mainly because I like bouncy, the bounciness of a gold nib. Um, I don't use a lot of rigid, very, very rigid nibs, um, and so I do miss a little bit of that bounce. But with a bit of, of sliding over some micro mesh, I think this would be, I could get this very easily to the smoothness I like. I'm not worried about the ink flow. I'm not worried about ink starvation or hard starts or skipping or any of that kind of stuff. So this is a really solid pen that writes really well, but it is on the high price range, high side of the price range. And I'm not one of those people who's like, well, I'm never going to buy a pen with a steel nib over that price. I don't really necessarily care what the nib is made of by itself. I'm more interested in, in the writing experience. And if it's a great steel nib, wonderful. I've got a $400 pen with a steel nib in it, but it's one of the best nibs I own. And that's great. I, I'd buy it again in a heartbeat. Uh, this one, because it is a mass produced pen, and it's not a huge, it's not like, you know, millions of these are made, but it is, it's a factory made pen as opposed to a craftsman made pen. You know, a one person shop in, in the middle of Ohio kind of thing. Um, this uh, $300 is kind of the max I would ever pay for this pen. This thing is rock solid. It is built like a tank. It is great in the hand. It writes very well, although not quite to my tastes. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful pen. And I get to give it away. I'm actually kind of sad I have to give this one away, but because it comes from the distributor or the manufacturer, uh, due to my code of ethics, I have to do a giveaway on this one. Breaks my heart because I love this copper pen. So head over to penhabit.com in the next few days after when this video is posted to see if the giveaway is still going on. And, uh, and I'm sure that if it is, you'll want to enter because this is a wonderful, wonderful pen. Again, a huge thank you to Kenro Industries for providing this pen for giveaway. I should also mention that while supplies last, the pen comes with this copper mug. Now this is called, this pen is called the Copper Mule, kind of around the, the story of the Moscow Mule, which is a drink made of vodka and ginger beer and I believe lime juice and some simple syrup. It's, uh, I've never had one before. I'm not much of a drinker, but it's always served in a copper mug. And so while supplies last, the pen will also come with a copper mug. Uh, and uh, I think you will, you will enjoy that. They even came up with a recipe called the Montegrappa Mule, which is uh, very similar to the Moscow Mule, but made with grappa instead of, uh, instead of vodka. So that should do it for this review. 
Uh, please head over to penhabit.com and take a look at the rest of the photos, read the written review, etc. I'm also going to do something I don't like to do and try not to do too often, but I've had a couple of uh, interesting changes in life experience in the last 24 hours. I was actually laid off from my job uh, yesterday. Um, the company I worked for had some pretty significant layoffs and about 25% of the company was let go. I was one of them, unfortunately. So in the meantime, until I find a new job, uh, the pen habit is kind of paying my bills. So if you haven't s s considered supporting the pen habit and uh, appreciate what I do, I would love to have you, you know, consider doing a little donation via Venmo or PayPal. You can go to paypal.me slash pen habit or go over to the Pen Habit page and click on the, the support page to find out how. I also uh, do, uh, you know, if you wanted to support, you could support through uh, Patreon, which you only pay a per, you know, per video rate, uh, and you can max, put a max limit on it. So if you wanted to say $5 a video, max $20 a month, you could do that. Uh, I realize that's a lot, so you can do significantly less than that too, but, uh, you know, it's, any support would be greatly appreciated because for the next few months, I'm going to be uh, pretty, pretty heavy hunting on the job hunt to find the next, the next dream job for Matt. And uh, so fortunately, I've got a whole backlog of pens to do and some time to do some more videos. So you'll be seeing some more videos coming up uh, before the end of the season, which happens at the end of May. And uh, thank you, as always, for joining me. Uh, I, I really do appreciate you coming and, and sitting through these videos and watching and, you know, sharing in this wonderful hobby with me, with all the wonderful people I've had a chance to meet over the last three years. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.